Welcome back guys, this is Rob with Tech. If you guys ever wondered how to set up Open Media Vault in a RAID 1 as your boot OS, uh, this is the video for you. So right now I'm going to be using a VM for this example. So it's just a name. Uh, the thing is, uh, Open Media Vault doesn't natively support a RAID setup within its installer. So you have to go uh, install Debian first. So I'm going to install Debian 12.7 using the net install ISO. And this is a VM, but basically as long as you have dual uh, boot drives, it will work for you. Now, also another thing, this is for legacy. Uh, your BIOS has to be set for legacy. So if you guys are using U U UEFI, this is not going to work for you. So just FYI. So I'm just going to go ahead and make 220 gigabyte disks. This this will be the ones uh, basically our our boot drives, three cores, uh, forty six network. I'll leave it at that. Start this. All right, so we're going to go into the graphical install. Do English. States. All right, so I'm just going to name this whatever I want my media vault to be. So AMV RAID 1. Domain, I'm just gonna leave it blank. Root password. Now I'm gonna create a user. I'm going to put my time zone in the central time. Now here's where you have to set up the RAID 1. So you're going to manual and you're going to see that we have our two drives, right? So this were the two that we have. This would be your boot drives that you want to set up as a RAID 1. We would be using MD ADM, MD ADM as a RAID uh, so we can use that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the first one. I'm just going to do create an empty partition. I'm going to do yes. I'm going to do the same thing on the second one. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go configure software RAID. We're going to do yes to this. We're going to create an empty device. We're going to do a RAID 1. It's going to ask you how many members you have. I'm going to leave it at 2 because we have 2 members. And then how many of a spare device? I'm going to do 0. Now we're going to space bar space bar to select both of them you're going to click continue and then you're going to do yes now finish now you're going to see that we have a raid one device uh, this is basically it's the two um this two drives right now the other thing that we can do because we already have this we're going to do guided partitioning we're going to do use entire disk but we're going to select the raid one device now i'm going to do all files in one partition now you can see that now we have a primary and a logical. Now we should be able to just uh, finish partition and write changes. Do yes. All right, in this part, I'm just going to skip because I don't have any more media. So I'm going to click continue. Now I'm going to do United States. This is for the network mirror. I don't have a proxy. Here I'm going to say select no. 
Now, very, very important because Open Media Vault will not let you install if you have a, a desktop environment. So I'm going to uncheck this Debian desktop environment and GNOME. I'm also going to do SSH server. I'm going to continue. Now, this one is also very important because if you install the Grub bootloader only on one drive, you're not going to be able to boot, even though it's a RAID 1, because the Grub, the Grub is very important whenever it's loading. So here uh, it says, do you want to install the Grub bootloader to your primary? I'm going to do yes, but we're going to do manual. So we see both drive, uh, dev SDA, dev SDB. So we're going to click enter device manual, and we're going to go ahead and provide that. Uh, four slash def four slash s d a then we're gonna do four slash dev s d b which is the both that we have now we're gonna continue that's gonna install grub on both devices so in case that one of our devices were to fail the grub would be installed on on the other drive so it should automatically boot up from there now there's no real easy way of testing if this RAID 1 worked. I mean I there's some commands so we can see uh both drives in sync, but uh in order to test them like if in case they boot, uh you can't really do it without messing uh with the RAID 1. I'll explain later in the video. Alright, so we're gonna reboot. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the uh, disk itself the console and then we'll do continue now this is basically reinstalled uh, linux debian 12.7 uh using a raid one so now we have a raid one and we need to install open media Vault on top of this so there's a guide uh, while this boots will take that long uh, it's, it's already done. So here in the installation, you can search for um, how to install uh, Open Media Vault on Debian, and you're going to find this guide here. So basically, in the command line, you have to run all these commands. So if you're, I'm going to show you, that's what I'm going to be copying from here. Uh, also, I'm going to SSH into the machine. So now we go into back to our machine here. We're going to do root. And then I'm going to put the password. Then you do an IPA. You're going to give you the IP address that it has. So this one has 10.0.0.120. So I'm going to go ahead and open PuTTY. It's important to use PuTTY because if you use the CMD on Windows, it's going to cost you. So you can't copy and paste uh, correctly. So I'm going to do just 120. So I'm going to do root at 10.0.0.120. My bad. That's not going to work because it has to be the other account, the account that you created. So in my case, I created Robert. Uh, so I'm going to just do that. Robert at and then the IP address. Okay. So I connected with Robert and then my IP address. Now in here, we're going to have to switch to the uh, root user. So we're going to do SU dash. And that should put us in the root. We're going to specify the password. So there we're in the root account. Now I'm just going to copy and paste what I was showing you on this other page right here. Um, I'm not going to show that, but I'm just going to go uh, block by block. Just gonna I laid everything, copy, and then I'm going to throw it in here. Then I'm going to add the packet repositories. Or package repositories. And then we're going to finally install Open Media Vault.
All right, so now we're going to do this other command. Now to set up the network, we're going to do OMV dash first aid. Here I'm going to do configure network interface. Uh, that's my network interface. Uh, do you want to set up IPv4? I'm going to do yes. Uh, I don't want to do use DCP, so I'm going to do no. And then here I have to specify my address manually. So this is it. I'm going to set up a static. So that's the one I'm going to use. Now my net mask. This will be depending on your environment, uh, the subnet and the IP address. This is what the way that it's set up on mine. This is my gateway. Now, I think I did a typo there. 10.0.0.1. I don't want to use IPv6. DNS, this is the same. My router is the one that handles DNS. I don't want to enable wake up on LAN. So that's what I'm going to do now. Now, this connection is going to... It's going to get killed because uh, we just changed the IP address from uh, 10.0.0.120 to 10.0.0.46. But now we go into our browser and we do an uh, 10.0.0.46. We should start seeing the Open Media Vault come up. There it is. Now the default. Uh, username is admin and then the password is open media vault like that open media vault so I'm gonna log in now first of all remember that we had created our user like when my case was Robert so we gotta go to users users and make sure you edit your user and add underscore SSH, uh, this one, so so you have SSH access into the machine. Also, let's see if sudo is on here. I want to make my Robert account at sudo access, sudo, so I can invoke root. So I'm going to add sudo. I'm going to remove these tags. You can leave the tags there. I, I don't need those tags. I'll go ahead and save. Not sure what other, all these other groups are. Just leave them there. I think they were added from uh, the Debian installation. So I'll apply. Another thing is we need to install the MD uh, plugin. So if we go to system and we go to plugins. You're going to get this error, but this is because it hasn't loaded anything or any other repositories. So you go back to system and then you do uh, what's it called? Uh, Okay, upgrade manager, management, up, update management. You do updates and then you do search here in this uh, magnifying glass. It's going to go ahead and refresh all the repositories. Okay, now we can go back to plugins and now we see the plugins. Um, so in here, we're going to do MD. It's going to be the one that's called multi device, it's open media about MD. I'm going to go ahead and install that. Now there's another one, um, not needed, but I like to use. Yes, yeah, it's folder to RAM. So I think it's part, uh, you have to install, uh, OMB extra. So let me do. Yeah, no, you have to install uh, OMV extras. So the reason we installed that uh, MD plugin, if you go here into storage and you do multi device, that's the plugin that we installed. Now you're going to see that we have our main, uh, this is our RAID one, and you can see it's in a clean state. Now this P1, P2, P3, those are partition one, partition two. This is like the main one. And then you got your, um, this one is your swap. I'm not sure what this one is. But basically, you can go in here, show details, and it will show you. Uh, right now, you're running on the RAID 1. You have a, a state active uh, resync. And then you can see here in the bottom, the active members, active sync. You got SDA 1. And you also have SDB 1. Whenever you have one that fails, you'll see it here. Like if you disconnect a disk or if you or one fails, it will have an F. So this is a, a management. So the other thing that once you set this up, 
it's very important, right? So for you to monitor this, you go into system and then uh, notifications, you go to events, make sure you have multi device or software rate selected. And also, once you have this selected, make sure to go back to settings and you fill in this SMTP server data uh, because the whole point of the RAID, right? And, and if you don't know, it goes on uh, OneDrive fails, you'll get an email. So real convenient. So you might want to mess with some of these so you won't get like a lot of alerts, but uh, the smart and the uh, multi-device are important in my opinion. Now, I guess I can show you in action now because we already have this uh, Open Media Vault installed. I'm not going to go into setting up a shared folder or how to set up the file system or any of that because uh, uh, I have another video uh, doing that. This is just more of showing you how to get Open Media Vault uh, booting in a RAID 1. So you can also go to the command line. Um, we can manage... After you install Open Media Vault, it's gonna enable the root. So let me go change settings, appearance change 16. Okay, there it is. So it, it enables the, the root account. So you can disable that in, I think, in uh, SSH, on service SSH. Okay, so uh, what I want to show you here is we can do two commands cat or slash proc and then um, I think MD stat. Yeah, so in here we can see real quick, right? Uh, MD zero is active, so rate one, SD one, and SDB one. The other command is MD admin dash dash detail, and then you do the you have to specify your rate, right? So this one, the default is dev MD zero, which is the same thing that you see on the plugin. Now I'm going to shut down this uh, open media vault. I'll do shut down. Then I kill it. So we'll go back to Proxmox. What I want to show you is if you go into hardware and we got this to this here. And I'm just going to disconnect one of them and I'm going to show that it's going to boot. All right, so turned off. So we go to hardware and I'm just going to kill, I guess, this first one. Detach. Now I'm going to go back to console. I'm going to turn it on and you're going to see that it's going to start right up. Well, actually, in the Proxmox, it doesn't add both to the bootable. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Uh, shut down. Stop. Okay, so if we go into hardware again and we look into... Or options. Yeah, options. Boot order. You see this one's not enabled by default. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this up. You now don't have to do this if you're actually doing it physically, but in this case, it's just in Proxmox. It just sets one of the devices or one of the uh, drives as your boot drive. So I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to go back to console. And now it's going to work. There you go. Now I don't recommend it you testing your rate one setup like this because when you boot up Debian, without one of the members it automatically throws it out of the raid and I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit okay so we should be you're gonna see that it's already gonna be up so admin open media vault Okay, so if you go back to storage, multi device, you can see now you're running a degraded. You click st uh, details, you're going to see that this one on top was removed, which was uh, SDA, but now the other one took over. 
Um, the reason I tell you not to mess with this like this because look, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down this. So we're in, we're now we're in a degraded state because we removed one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shut down. Now, as soon as you shut down, I'm just gonna go add the disk back. Okay, so here is a non-use disk. This is the same disk. I'm gonna go ahead and double click, and I'm gonna click add. Now we also need to go into option. This is just because of Proxmox. I'm going to enable it and I'll put this one as the primary. Um, so now I'm going to go back to console and I'm going to start it. And you're going to see that it is going to work. But now you're going to have one of the devices is out of the raid. Um, I'll show you how to add it back. But uh, that's why I was, this is not, I don't know how to test it without getting one of the devices out of the raid. Okay, so you go back in here, we sign in again. Do storage, multi device, you can see active degraded. Now, if we go ahead and connect back into the session here, okay, and we do the I was going to say the same thing right uh, if you do the cat one it just says that we have one sda only and if you check on the this one md atom detail you're going to show that the other one was removed we're only activated on dev sda a1 now you can do an lsbak and you're going to see that right now this is the sd1 this is the one that is in uh, active right now and SDB one, which was our old RAID member, is no longer there. Um, so to add it back, you would have to do uh, under the root user, you do MD Atom dot manage, and then you're gonna call the dev MD zero because that was the name for our default one. And you're gonna do add, and then you're gonna do dev SDB one, which is the one that got removed. Now, if we check the progress again, detail dev, you're going to see that it's going to be resyncing, spare, rebuilding, because we manually added it into it. And the rebuild status is right here. It shouldn't take that long because it's only the 20 gigs that I have, so it's the 9%. But also, another thing that we might need to do, like in case, because they remember the grub, if, if the grub is not there, it's, the bootloader is not going to be there. So, in case that you install Debian RAID 1, but you're not sure that if you put the, the grub bootloader correctly, you can run a, a D package, then dash reconfigure. Configure. And then you can do grub dash PC. Now, remember, this only applies for legacy uh, install Debian. So we're going to do this. Now, in here, I'm just going to click enter. Just click enter. And then I'm going to do no. And then, okay. Now make sure both of these are selected. This would automatically install Grub on those devices. So if you see in your kit, let's say that you see one selected, that means that only Grub is installed on that one. So make sure you select both tab, and this will install Grub on both of your drives so now don't mess with the drives uh, you can restart your system as normal um in case that it, it in case that it really does fail uh the other drive will take over and you'll see an f on the device when you run the md detail an f right you guys want to see how to recover uh let's say we can i can sim simulate a drive failure you guys want to see that drop it down in the comments and i can make a follow-up video to this where I show you how to fail a member and add a member. But I'll be off with this video. I hope you guys liked it and uh, learned something. Uh, if you guys have any questions, drop it down in the comments. Make sure you like, subscribe. Thank you.